All right, so as promised, here comes part two on breeding up your competitive Pokemon. So hopefully anyone who needed it was able to watch part one on the money-making guide and should have all the money they need saved up for this next part. You're probably going to want to have about six to 700,000, depending on which Pokemon you're wanting to breed, but we'll get into the specifics later. All right, so assuming you've fulfilled that part, we're going to get into how to raise Pokemon. I'll be using for an example here, this Gibble that I just recently caught, starting off with bad stats, no EVs, and a useless nature. We're going to be turning that into a perfect Garchomp, as you can see right over here. Now the Garchomp I'm planning to build is going to have five perfect IVs, with everything besides special attack being maxed, and I'll be running a Jolly Nature. The reason for this is Garchomp's base 102 speed allows him to outspeed a lot of other base 100 threats, including the other important dragons and dragon scarfers in the tier, like the exceptionally common Scarf Hydreigon. There is an option to run a 6 IV Garchomp where you use the Naive Nature, which allows you to run Fire Blast, but although this lets you handle Ferrothorn and Skarmory much better, it doesn't allow you to one-hit KO either of them, even on the 4 times super effective Ferrothorn, and because I'm planning on using a Choice Scarf set, I feel it's really a suboptimal move for me to be using here. If you feel that you want to do the extra work and you aren't running something like a Magnezone to counter these Pokemon, then maybe that set is for you. It works much better on setup Garchomp, so if you're trying to use a Swords Dance Substitute Sweeper Garchomp, I definitely recommend thinking about Fire Blast, although not with Swords Dance and Substitute. So we're going to start by covering the very basics of breeding here. Now, whether or not you're familiar with breeding from the base games, breeding in PokeMMO is a bit different. Some things to keep in mind are whether you're trying to breed egg moves onto your Pokemon, whether you're still trying to remain the original trainer of your Pokemon, whether your Pokemon initially came out with the right nature, or if you're going to need to add that part on later. Now we'll cover what to do for each of these steps later. I'll talk about which ones pertain to Garchomp and which ones will be different and how you'd accomplish those on your own Pokemon. Okay, so first things first, how exactly does breeding work in PokeMMO? Well, in PokeMMO, if you're wanting to breed your Pokemon, as within the base games, you're going to want to go to one of the daycare centers that allows you to store two Pokemon in there. There's some in every major region, I'm just going to choose the one in Mauville City in Pokemon Emerald because it's the one I'm most familiar with, and I feel like there's a nice area around it. So, talk to this guy right over here, he'll say he'll give you two Pokemon, he'll say give him two Pokemon and he'll give you an egg, you can go ahead and choose your Pokemon here. Doo -doo -doo. So Pokemon breed based off of egg group and not based off species. So a Gibble can breed with any Pokemon in the dragon type, or in the dragon egg group, which it is, which is why I can breed with Magikarp. Magikarp are what I recommend using for any dragon breed that you're going for because they're much easier to catch and much cheaper to buy if you're looking to do that. So if you look at the stats in the middle here, this is going to be the child Pokemon you get from breeding this Gibble with this Magikarp. Because I caught the female, the OT, or original trainer, is going to be me, regardless of who caught the male. This holds true for every Pokemon, with the exception of if there's a Ditto in play, in which case, the Ditto, this original trainer, will always be disregarded, in the original trainer of who has the Pokemon that is not Ditto will always be applied here. Now when we look at the stats of the bred Pokemon, the stats are either going to be the mothers, the fathers, or an average rounded down, and the ratios for those are always going to be 25, 50, 25. What this means is that I could either get this pretty bad 14, this perfect 31, or some mix in the 22 range, but that's not something I'm willing to gamble on. So if you want to control this, we're going to go right inside that building to my right. Let's we'll take a quick stroll in here, and this is where we find the main money cost of bracers. Let's go ahead and talk to this lady, and you can buy any of these braces for 10,000. I'm going to go buy one here just as an example. Bada boom, we get the power anklet. Now what the power anklet does is it makes the Pokemon who's holding it guaranteed to pass down their speed IV. So instead of being the mom's dad's or average, it is guaranteed to be whichever parent's holding it, which in this case will be the dad. We're going to go ahead and talk to the daycare man again. And we'll go ahead, give him our gibble, and we'll give him this Magikarp here. So now if you look, it's showing this speed 31 IV in green. That's because that is a guaranteed thing that will be passed down. So Sandstorm is an egg move that will be guaranteed to be passed down from this gibble to the baby gibble. The OT will always be Rota Ewok. And this stat will always be 31 because of the speed anklet. These other stats aren't, aren't a guarantee from either of the parents, which is why they're in white. Tackle is just a base move that Gibble has, which is why it also appears in white there. So we're going to go ahead and push breed. And Pokemon has removed the time it takes for the egg to be created, so it immediately comes out. Oh, you're just in time. Your Pokemon has an egg. You'll tell them, this, yes, that you want it. And here's where you can choose a specific gender. Because I always want my Garchomps to come out with me being the original trainer. I want to keep this Gibble to always be the female of the group. It costs a little bit extra to choose, and you should probably just keep all your eggs and Pokeballs until you're ready to put the last one in a luxury ball, whichever ball you prefer. Although PokeMMO has made the process of creating the egg instant, they have not, however, removed the time it takes for the egg to hatch. 
in order to speed up your egg's hatching time. I recommend getting a Pokemon with Flame Body and keeping it in front of your party. I use Volcarona for this, but there's many other Pokemon that would work. So what you do is you get your Pokemon with the ability Flame Body or Magma Armor, bring it to the front, the ability Flame Body will show up, which cuts the amount of time it takes to hatch in half. So while you're waiting for your egg to hatch, you can go ahead and do basically whatever you'd like. If you'd like to do battles, if you'd like to go catch more wild Pokemon to use later on in the breeding process, or if you just want to tab out and do something else in the background, which are all perfectly fine, the amount of time it takes for a Pokemon egg to hatch varies based on the species of Pokemon that it is, with a lot of the rarer species having longer egg times. So this Gibble probably won't be done anytime soon, but we'll go ahead and skip to that. All right, so here it is. We've got our little Gibble. So you can go ahead and look right here, and just as we saw on the previous screen, he came out with a perfect 31 speed IV. So now that we have this step finished, I'm going to be showing you how to breed this Gibble up into a 5x31 Garchomp with all the IVs that we need maxed. All right, so here I've got my Gibble, and I've got this Magikarp that I'm going to have it breed with. So female and male means they're compatible, and they have speed and HP as their perfect stats. So I'm going to go ahead and give this power anklet here to Gibble, and I'm going to go ahead over to Magikarp and give it the power weight. So this will pass down its HP IV, and this will pass down its speed IV. Da -da -da -da. So this is the general process you're going to go through when you're trying to breed up a Pokemon. You're going to re be repeating this over and over. We'll take our Gibble, we'll take our Magikarp. Now we've guaranteed the HP and we've guaranteed the speed. So we took two 1x31s and combined them into a 2x31. Now, when we're trying to make a 3x31, you'll notice that there's no way for us to hold three different items to pass down three guaranteed IVs. So what we're doing here is going to kind of show how all further breeding is going to be taking place. We already have our two IVs, which we can guarantee passed down by the mom and dad both have, having an item, but now we have to guarantee three IVs so that we can continue progressing towards all five. Well, how are we going to do that with only being able to hold two items? I'm going to be showing you right now. So go ahead and talk to the guy again. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this Gibble with the HP and speed, but then I'm going to grab this Magikarp that I also have lying around with HP, or sorry, with attack and speed. So if you'll notice, I have this Gibble holding the HP item, and I have this Magikarp holding the attack item. That means that I'm passing on the HP and passing on the attack. Well, the speed on this baby is also always going to be 31. That's because it's either going to have a 25% chance to be this Gibble, a 25% chance to be this Magikarp, or a 50% chance to be the average of 31 and 31, which is still 31. And this is how you're going to progress your Pokemon up. After this, we'll take two 3x31s, which have two overlapping stats. So I'll take this HP, Attack, and Speed Gibble and combine it with, let's say, a HP, Attack, and Defense Magikarp, and bada boom, we have HP, Attack, Defense, and Speed Gibble. This is how the process is going to go. I'm not going to be showing clips of each individual step at this point, because now you should be able to get the process. We'll just go ahead, breed here, bada boom. Yes, we want the baby. Do I want a specific gender? Yes, I still want it to be female. Bada boom. Pokemon egg, and we're good to go. We'll run around until Volcarona decides to hatch this one for us too. So now that we've covered just the general process of breeding in PokeMMO, we're going to be getting into some of the specifics, and we're going to be looking at Garchomp here to cover how to do it efficiently, how to save money and time, and how to get the Pokemon that you need. So now that we've covered how to set up your IVs the way you want, as I've just finished here, let's go ahead and look at nature. So while I finish the Skibble and it has all the IVs that I need, its nature is absolute garbage for a Garchomp with lowered attack and increased special defense. So what I need to do is I need to change this over to a Jolly Nature. The way you do that in PokeMMO is instead of having both Pokemon hold a Brace when you breed them, one Pokemon holds a Brace to pass down its IV, and the other Pokemon holds an Everstone to guarantee that it passes down its nature. The easiest way to get the best nature in your Pokemon is just to breed your 5x31 and hope it comes out with the right nature. If it doesn't, you're already going to have to do that, and if it does, great, you saved yourself a lot of work. Then you go and breed a 4x31 which is of a compatible gender. So you'd make a male 4x31, and if it comes out with the right nature, perfect. Slap an Everstone on it, breed it with this, and you're good to go. If your 4x31 didn't come out with the right nature, that's fine. Breed a 3x31 and see if that came with the right nature. If that didn't, then just keep going down. The reason you do it this way is because at any point in time, if you get lucky, you save yourself extra steps. If you start by breeding up a 1, and then a 2, then a 3, then a 4, and then a 5, that's the max amount of work that it can take. So if you start with 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, you can only ever save time. If any of those Pokemon happen to roll jolly, bada boom, keep it, and you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and start that process off now. I'm going to go ahead and showing clips of the breeding as it goes on, and hopefully we we'll get this Garchomp finished in no time. In a rare stroke of luck, my 3x31 actually turned out to have a jolly nature, which is exactly what I needed. 
So I went ahead and put up a 4x31 and I kept my 5x31 gibble. What I'm going to be doing here is showing you how to transfer over your nature using an Everstone. While the process is very simple, I thought I'd at least show it happening just to make sure there's no confusion and you don't accidentally end up wasting your precious breeding Pokemon. We'll go back to this person here. You can go ahead and pick that bottom Magikarp and the other one. So here we'll look just to make sure we've got what we needed. There we go. Four IVs with 31 and Jolly Nature. Anything in green is what's being guaranteed to be passed down by an item. So you can make sure Jolly, 4x31, perfect. We'll go ahead and breed this. And because my 5x31 is a female, I want this to come out as a male. Yes, yes, yes. Pokeball. All right, then we wait, and we are just about finished with this Garchomp. All right, and we're here for the final step. And so here we go. Go to the walk, Jolly, 5 by 31. Hello, Garchomp. For this last one, you can pick whichever gender you'd like. If it's a Pokemon or you think you might want to tinker around with it later, I generally recommend leaving it as a female, which makes it just easier to make changes to, um, where I could breed up a, a chain of Magikarps to change it, as opposed to having to have another controlled chain of Gibbles. However, with this Pokemon, I think I'm pretty well set on keeping it a Jolly Garchomp. So with that, I can go ahead and make it a male. And I choose to take all my competitive Pokemon and put them in luxury balls. All right, there we go. And here's our Garchomp. The breeding is all done. All right, so we finally did it. Here's our 5x31 Jolly Gibble. So um, that cover is how to breed up a Pokemon where all you're looking for is nature. So there's one more thing that can be important while breeding, and that's egg moves. So if you look over here, um, I have the ability to learn Swagger, Headbutt, Twister, and Sandstorm, and those are because of the Pokemon that I've bred with. None of, them, or none of them are important, so I wasn't really focusing on them this build, which is why they didn't matter. There are some Pokemon where there are incredibly important moves to that Pokemon that cannot be learned unless you breed with another specific Pokemon. For instance, on Tyranitar, uh, two of the options are going to be Dragon Dance and Pursuit. While I don't currently use Dragon Dance, I wanted the option to switch to it later, and it's necessary to have the egg move now, so don't have to breed an entirely new Pokemon. Pursuit is necessary on Tyranitar, and so if you're breeding a Tyranitar, you are going to need Pursuit. The way I transferred Pursuit over was I bred it from a Trico, but you can look at specific guides for each individual move in Pokemon that you're trying to do. To show the process of how this works, egg moves can be passed along through any continuous chain of Pokemon. So let's say that your Trico learns uh, Pursuit. You get the Pursuit in the Trico, you breed it onto a Larvitar, and then any other Larvitar as you breed without Larvitar will still be able to have Pursuit. You couldn't breed that Larvitar into, say, a Pokemon that cannot learn Pursuit and breed it back into a Larvitar. The egg move would no longer be there. So as long as it goes from one Pokemon that knows the move, and they have to actually know it, not just the fact that it is a Trico, but the fact that it is a Trico with Pursuit, that can be bred onto your Larvitar, and then that can go along in your chain of Larvitars. In some of the earlier base games, egg moves had to be kept on the male, but as far as PokeMMO goes, as long as they are on a compatible Pokemon, it will be fine. And so if you transfer it over to your continuous line of original trainer females, you'll be good to go. Just for an example of what to look for when you're doing that, I'll show you. So both in the monstrosity, both in the monstrosity egg group would be my Haxorus and my Tyranitar. So if you look, these are the egg moves that are getting passed down in green. So Rock Slide and Superpower, these are TMs and HMs known by the parent. It'll tell you if you move over them. So this is just an easy way you can pass down moves. If your parent Pokemon already knew one of these moves, it will just pass it down for you to save you getting another TM, which is a nice thing. Now these, these egg moves right here, that's what's going to be important because it's what's going to allow you to be able to learn this move. So this Larvitar would have access to these moves, whereas a Larvitar made with um, a completely blank Tyranitar with no egg moves would not be able to learn Dragon Dance or Pursuit. Now, Haxorus is a great option to use as part of your fodder for a Tyranitar if you are building the option and like a Dragon Dance Tyranitar. I don't recommend one right now, as both Scizor and Conkleter absolutely destroy it with super effective priority. But in the world where that's what you're looking for, Haxorus allows you to use Magikarp as a lot of the stock to breed into Tyranitar, which is great and very affordable. And also, it's a one-to-one -one switch. Of, they're both in the monstrosity group, and it carries Dragon Dance. Okay, so that should be everything you need to know on breeding. As far as getting the items for breeding, as I talked about in my previous video on making money, if you want to buy your braces with battle points at the Battle Frontier, it's a good deal as long as you cannot sell a choice item for more than 137000 The market currently seems to be keeping choice items at just above 140000 
So for the foreseeable future, you're going to be wanting to just turn your battle points into choice items, turn that into money, and then buy your braces. But if anything changes, make sure to keep checking the market. If it ever dips below that point and you need braces, it's a lot better deal just to turn your battle points directly into braces. All right, that's it for me. I'll show you how to EV these Pokemon up in the coming video, and I'll cover all the known EV training spots for me using the new Horde training mechanisms. It's a great improvement over what we used to have. All right, I'll see you guys later.